Good morning. Uh, Good morning. Today we have uh, Darshan Kure. Thank you so much, Darshan, for joining us. Uh, Darshan you, is the uh, director of, or he's the founder of Altitude.lk. He will talk about it later. Uh, he's also uh, the architect of uh, Marga 2.0, the learning platform. He has, he's been the one who has kind of crafted it and you know, designed it. And he's a, a consultant of Marga Institute. He has been the former uh, director of Slastom and also part of the ICT Sector Skills Council, uh, the Minister of Skills and Skills Development and Vocational Training. So today, Darshan, uh, I want to ask you this question, you know, um, online training and education is seems to be the buzzword, you know, like probably because of social distancing and issues that people have getting people together. Uh, people are now looking, trainers are looking at online training. It's not that it's something new that has been there for maybe probably 10 years, but uh, everybody feels that um, online education would be the order of the day, will be part of the new norm. And uh, of course, I have my certain reservations with regard to what can be done and what cannot be done. But from your experience and from your knowledge, uh, what do you think uh, the post-COVID situation would be in, in, with regard to education and training? And how can we leverage on the plus points of online, uh, that whole online uh, mode, mode of education? I mean, the obvious answer, so I can give you a very obvious answer, which uh, most people have been discussing on forums. Uh, and also I'll give you my answer, but the obvious answer is there are pros and cons in online education. There's, I mean, uh, you know, you can, uh, you can join an online meeting from anywhere, then you can uh, access uh, anyone from anywhere. Uh, there's a lot of uh, material that you can post online. Uh, obviously the, uh, you know, the speed of communication, uh, the, the cost of it. Okay, so those are the those are the benefits uh, that are usually uh, that are pretty evident and pretty obvious. Uh, f okay, online training and education. From my point uh, from my point of view, uh, when you when you take a certain concept online, um, uh, we look at the advantages and disadvantages. I think uh, one of the clear things we have to establish is the fact that. Uh, when you go online and uh, sort of try to uh, educate someone, right? Uh, the, 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 the biggest issue is um, you are passing on uh, knowledge through a certain portal within a certain framework, right? So uh, the online framework itself is has certain limitations so uh, when i when i say certain limitations uh, really for me knowledge uh, like i've said in previous discussions knowledge is not only about passing information from one person to another so what happens in online training is really passing information from one side to another so uh, so how do we ensure that uh, we are educating the other person so I think the biggest problem in online education is the fact that there is no two-way discussion, right? And um, in a classroom type learning, uh, you get a you get a you get a group of people, you get a teacher, and actually in in, in modern day teaching, you get the student to uh, really understand the topic and then. Uh, give their own uh, own own uh, sense of it, or own own um, take on it, right? And uh, you get them to think, you get them to think, they, you get them to understand, you get them to discuss. Sometimes uh, a very complex topic can be broken down into uh, a very simple sort of. It could be like a debate about a uh, about a political party or a political situation or like a timely topic like COVID. So you take a complex scenario, uh, like you can <clears throat> talk about supply. I mean, recently I was doing some lectures and trainings and I was talking about supply chain management and, and the presence in situation in, in Sri Lanka with, with COVID and how the supply chain management 
uh, function has changed. So I got, got students to think about it. But this is, of course, again online. But if I was really uh, physically am among them, I would have got them to think about scenarios, act out those scenarios, and uh, sort of uh, inbuild the knowledge. So that's, uh, because, uh, I mean, as we all know, I'm sure people watching would know that knowledge is just knowledge unless you do something. I mean, you can talk about uh, many concepts like supply chain management, but to really be an expert on supply chain management, you have to do supply chain management. So I feel that online is just a, is a platform, right? It, it's, a good, uh, it's a good platform, right? But it, you can't uh, educate a person through an online means. And this applies to, to your online commerce, e-commerce, right? Uh, so a lot of people think that, uh, you know, just because they sell something online that they are a digital company. Uh, that's not true. Right? To be a digital company, uh, there are certain technological uh, changes you have to make in your organization. You have to be able to uh, do payments. You have to be able to give uh, the customer experience. You have to really... Um, have all the functions in the value chain inbuilt in your digital system, not just delivering, uh, going online and to a website. Just because you have a web, basically you're saying you have a website that uh, acts as a buying portal and they are digital, you're not digital. So, uh, so I'm not the expert on this. So I, I might have people who are, who are more great about this. So this is, a, this is an example. And I feel uh, that online is just a portal and uh, the knowledge and education factor is far more uh, such a bigger area and you mentioned training so training again I think we are even going <clears throat> further by saying training uh, the whole aspect of training is about uh, is about converting a person's skill set his values his attitudes his knowledge his skills right uh, converting them into uh, uh, a certain uh, what can I say you have a target right you you basically you have you have a person with let's say a skill of nine in communication you want to convert him to a 9.5 how do we do that so first of all you have to do a lot of research to identify why he's a nine then once you identify there are certain techniques you use there are certain uh, spoken uh, the spoken uh, speaking techniques there are uh, communication techniques uh, which you have to sort of teach that person and then you have to make sure that person also gives you feedback and you study the person's communication and to make that person a 9.5. Mm -hmm. So training is like that. I mean, the problem, I think, uh, especially of late since COVID-19, most people are communicating through webinars. They think that they are training also, yeah, yeah. which is uh, <laughs> very sad, <laughs> unfortunately. I mean, there's no... There's no um... Uh, proper measurement to see how engaged people are and yeah. how much they, they kind of absorb and how that is um, kind of converted to their behavior in actual yeah. uh, classroom, uh, uh, sorry, actual work situation. We are talking about uh, training. Uh, interesting point, uh, Darshan brought about the values and attitudes. Uh, you know, we were talking about this uh, whole model. Uh, some time back, uh, values, attitudes, uh, skills, and knowledge, uh, or knowledge and skills. Uh, and uh, sometimes I tend to think that there would be limitations in, in the area of online uh, delivery to impart uh, or impart uh, knowledge. Uh, sorry, impart at, uh, values, especially when you, when you look at school children i mean we don't send school our children to school just to learn things or just to sorry just to uh, get qualifications just to go through all levels and a levels it's much more than that it's a whole uh, process of uh, getting them socialized you know getting them absorbed to certain values that society upholds uh, so there is kind of disconnect there when it comes to online education uh, do you think uh, technology will uh, kind of overcome that also as we go on uh, and that will have some way of people experiencing certain things uh, do you think that could be possible okay i think i think uh, 
Okay. Uh, first of all, I'll, I'll try to uh, try to, uh, in a layman's point of view, uh, make people understand how values and attitudes mm. are connected. Right. So, just giving an example. So, uh, if you take um, if you take a senior CEO of a company, right? Uh, <laughs> so I'll give an sorry if I'm controversial, but um, uh, these days CEOs are uh, very busy firing people. <laughs> Right, so uh, they they are saying, okay, we don't have money. COVID has, uh, you know, uh, COVID has has such a bad impact, and we our sales are low and our costs uh, are high. I don't know how the costs are high because uh, all the overheads are low. But then this is what I'm hearing on 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 these shows, these talk shows. Right, so this is really amusing. And uh, I had to fire my people now. This is this is the thing. So is that ethical? Uh, absolutely not, right? Uh, but is that um, in line with that organization's financial goals and uh, vision and objectives? Maybe. So how do you teach this, right? So I mean, uh, in, in the ethics-related material I've researched on and I've, uh, I've done for certain levels of studies, masters level. So you, you know, ethics is a gray area because. People say that ethics for you, uh, what me, what uh, ethics means for you, uh, doesn't necessarily apply to me. So uh, I think ethics is something that uh, you know there is always. Um, sorry, give me a give me a second. I'm having a bit of a crisis with my power, so I'll just connect my. <laughs> sorry. No problem. Uh, so uh, so like I said, ethics is uh, what what's ethical to me may not be ethical to you. So. Uh, ethics needs to be sort of uh, evaluated. Uh, and then again, there, are, there is what is called something that is absolute. You know, that, you know yeah. where ethics are concerned or um, where morality is concerned. Uh, yeah. And so, I, I, uh, I, I tend to think that the COVID-19 has kind of exposed the uh, moral compass of many organizations, if not CEOs. Uh, so, what they consider ethical and what they consider moral uh, at this point of time. Yeah, but again, uh, uh, I mean, I'll give another example. Uh, so, uh, so again, employee being laid off, right? Um, so for a certain person, that person will say, okay, this is ethical because my organization, uh, you know, this person hasn't been performing. Uh, up to the expectation and my organization is going through losses and uh, I didn't, uh, you know, we have uh, given him certain indications that his performance is not good enough. So we feel that uh, it's ethical to, you know, uh, dismiss him. But at the same time, if you look, uh, another person will think, look, this guy is having so many family problems, commitments, and, you know, he's having financial difficulties, he's having personal difficulties. I think it's unethical. So again, it's, it, it's such a difficult thing to to teach, right? Because it requires so much of judgment. And then back to a question. Sorry about the disturbance. Uh, back to a question. So um, uh, things like this, you need to sort of um, inculcate the sort of the value uh, in in the person's head. You want to you have to plant a seed, and then you have to have so many stimulations. And now you mentioned technology. So and now this word simulations and technology goes together. So it's a matter of I think. Uh, uh, giving a lot of simula simulations and you know where finding out what sort of a person this person is uh, because uh, it all depends on how that person reacts in the gray areas like mm -hmm. that employee you know the gray areas I mean if you, uh, I mean one way of looking at it is okay if you have um, let's look at the COVID situation I mean we are we are um, bringing down a lot of a lot of uh, Sri Lankan workers uh, working overseas who are infected with COVID, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, ethically, <clears throat> it's the right thing to do because those people may not have the, the care needed and then the medical facilities needed. But another person might say, uh, ethically, it's a wrong thing to do because we are putting 21 million or 22 million people at risk. Mm -hmm. So that, now this is the thing. So this is where the ethics, uh, you know, where it's very difficult to... Uh, are we going to put 100 families at very high risk or 21 million people at very low risk? 
So this is a very tough, uh, these are tough decisions. And uh, really it's about simulations. It's about simulations, doing a lot of simulations uh, to get to a point where a person makes rational ethical decisions, looking at the bigger picture. What is the, uh, you know, it's like, you know, burning a city, burning a village to save a city, or, mm -hmm. you know, uh, that kind of thing. So, I mean, sometimes you have to do, take difficult decisions, but uh, you try to uh, minimize the harm. So these are things you have to sort of discuss, you need to do exercises, you need to simulate, and uh, yeah. So the technology will pay, play a part, but obviously you need people with experience, people with the right upbringing, and uh, people with, uh, you know, uh, who have uh, been in leadership. I think leadership is very important. I mean, people, a leader uh, should be able to teach this, yeah. It's like the, uh, the call that British government had to take uh, during the World War II uh, mm. with regard to Coventry. I think it was mm. Coventry. Uh, they just cracked the code, uh, mm. the German code, and they realized that the uh, city of Coventry was going to be bombed, but they didn't do anything. Uh, because they made a change. Uh, Germans would have realized that Royal Air Force had broken the code, and they would have changed the code after that. Uh, and to uh, kind of ensure that the Germans didn't know what was happening. They they allowed that city to be bombed. This is a situation like executive decisions sometimes are not that easy. Uh, and technology will, in my sense, um, push us uh, to a kind of a mindset uh, to take decisions in that manner. But still, uh, that, that ethical dilemma is not will remain in our um, consciousness, uh, conscious because we are by and large moral beings. So that question may not be answered uh, fully when it comes, I mean, when I'm, I'm, I'm referring to ethics behind a particular decision uh, that sometimes we will say we have I, I to, wouldn't... to make. Yeah, I wouldn't agree with you 100%, Tama, because um, there, there is a uh, sort of, uh, there is a certain amount of ethics uh, and morals we can teach people, right? Mm -hmm. So in schools, we see the religious, um, um, I think them, some of the subjects focusing on religion, focusing on what is right and what is wrong, mm -hmm. right? So I think that is a start. That is definitely a start of uh, building good values. But, uh, you know, some of these values, uh, I think, so they, then you come to, to the religious debate, which I don't want to go to. So some of these values, when you practice those values in uh, society, it becomes so different, right and wrong, you know. And, uh, you know, uh, some, some say, you know, you have to go to church. Oh, it's a sin and you will, you know. But some say, okay, I'm, um, I'm a believer of, God and I do the right thing. So mm -hmm. who's more ethical? So mm -hmm. so that's the thing. So religion has uh, those issues. But again, uh, showing uh, I, I think the education system can do much more by by really uh, building scenarios, putting uh, children in in leadership in in their own way uh, in in leadership, having to take decisions, um, having to take decisions where, where morality and uh, um, ethics is seen. So uh, I, th I think there is, there is a comprehensive, uh, I mean, there are comprehensive ways of doing it, but some, uh, certainly digital, the digitization and technology can help, but I mean, it, it's a very human thing. And uh, when it comes to values, it's a very human thing. And uh, that needs a lot of human intervention. Just a moment. Uh, so, um, Sorry, we have uh, just uh, uh, running out of time. Uh, uh, thank you very much, uh, Darshan, once again for joining today. I think we will take this conversation forward. Uh, I think we need to have a, a separate interview with regard to uh, how do we impart problem-solving skills, and you know, and. Uh, uh, things like that. Uh, uh, 
so uh, and also i think you have a very interesting model to present to our viewers also uh, what you have been working on so i'd like to take that on on, on a separate interview uh, whole thing about the mark the 2.0 platform and what sort of uh, areas that you will be concentrating on where education and training is concerned anyway thank you so much darshan can for I, um, um i can give me 2 minutes uh, because i think we've been discussing about uh, models mm -hmm. and giving the viewers some something to work on right mm -hmm. so um, you spoke about this uh, uh, values attitudes knowledge and skills wax model but um, today i'd also just want to touch on something briefly uh, sort of a knowledge hub concept okay uh, i think some of the um, commercial some of the industries are working on this concept i think and it's it's a timely concept because it it's it's the sort of mentality it's the sort of uh, structure that you need to actually address some of these national security issues or national issue level issues and uh, i've been studying uh, a few knowledge hubs so there's a uh, knowledge hub for european banking for the banking sector and they are they are working on uh, sort of um, new kinds of uh, payment methods and currencies right so uh, when it comes to a national issue now even this if you take the corona virus right um, the question we need to ask is uh, did the did the top researchers in the country did the top doctors in the country did the policy makers uh, all work together and did they have like a hub where they could exchange views and you know where obviously this kind of virus has happened before were they equipped enough to handle this kind of virus and obviously there were there were early warning signs right mm -hmm. um so i mean i think it is a exceptionally good way of uh, way, way they handled the virus and in terms of containing it but i think uh, going forward i think as a take away, take a take away when it comes to key national issues like uh, environmental pollution uh, you know the ocean pollution of the ocean um uh, destruction i mean uh, basically uh, uh, like you know natural disasters um even uh, nuclear warfare all these i mean big national threats terrorism legal threats uh legal system not functioning properly so i think there has to be a portal which where the experts of a country the the the, the educated the academia uh, the research experts and the policy makers constantly work with each other it doesn't have to be a meet now our people are some sorry i mean sometimes most people think you have to have a big meeting and you know call everyone and get their views no it could be a knowledge base it could be a bank right it could be a knowledge bank and where people access the information they need and just for clarification they might have a call like this you know and decisions are taken very quickly so uh, this is another concept i think we have to talk about when it comes to yes, knowledge yes. and 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 of course um, some of these programs need to talk about uh, this kind of uh, integration when it comes to knowledge and even even when it comes to some of the industry issues we have seen some of like agriculture there's a lot of discussion about agriculture a lot of experts talking about agriculture but i mean sometimes it's just one person giving one very uh, silo based view on agriculture yes you cannot do it like that you need to have there has to be collaboration and collaboration with between different i think with different disciplines as well uh, yeah where we look at this uh, look at a problem in a more holistic way Yes, that is the whole point of education and training. Yes. Yeah. So thanks. I mean, there's much more we can talk about, but uh, yeah. in the interest of time, uh, I, I suppose I, I sort of got everyone thinking about certain concepts. Let's uh, uh, sort of uh, go into more detail as we uh, go on. Thank you. Thank you once again, uh, uh, Darshan, for your excellent talks. We'll carry this conversation forward, uh, and I think. We'll also to discuss about education how we would kind of uh, thank you amma thank you